You wouldn't turn down a taste of the tropics in the middle of winter now, would you? This pear pineapple fruit crisp is the dessert you've been wanting, you've been craving. Marta Nielsen brings it to our table today. I should say you're bringing this recipe and with it the convincing argument to eat fresh. Absolutely. Eat what's in season. What is in season? Well, you know, we think that there's not very much in season in the winter time, but there's really a bounty of fresh fruits and vegetables that are in season right now. Like what? Well, Teach there's... Me. Okay, so easy things you can keep on the counter. Oranges, grapefruits, apples, bananas. Um, in your fridge, you can have pomegranates for an easy snack. Fresh pineapple actually is in season right now. So those so lots tropical of fruits that we yes. can mentally just use to escape to the beach, right? Absolutely. <laughs> in our head, you're bringing some of those fresh crops, those fresh produce options to this recipe. Why do you like this particular combination? Well, it brings that tropical flavor you mentioned, yeah. but it also has that like warm the belly kind of dessert we want in the winter time. Nice. It's like you're so, hitting the best yes. of both worlds. Yes. So Show us how to pull this it's together. It's super simple. You start with ripe pears. Now I tried this and learned the hard way that if you use unripe pears, they will not get soft when you bake them. Okay. So make sure they're ripe. Okay. Uh, and also fresh pineapple. So it's about three pears and half of a fresh pineapple chopped up. What type of pear are you using, Marta? So an, it's a French word. Okay. Anjou. That works for me. Anjou pears. That works um, for me. Or Bosque work well also. Okay. okay. So we're going to add two tablespoons of brown sugar. Okay and a little bit of cinnamon. I love a gal who sings in the kitchen because that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally what I do. Okay, and this is the zinger. This is fresh ginger ground Oh, wow. Up. So I use a microplane and just... Is it like tasty? Yeah, yeah, so it kind of turns into a paste. Okay. But it'll give it kind of a zingy... I feel like that's a lot. Is that a lot? It's about a teaspoon. Okay. I like a lot of ginger. Bring on the kick, right? Yes. Yeah, so, and as it bakes, it mellows a little bit. So, okay. if you don't want to do fresh ginger and get that arm workout, grating uh -huh. it, you can use dried, and you'll want to use about a quarter teaspoon. I'm smiling because this feels just sort of like an odd combination. I, I trust know. you. My food life is in your hands. I know. Well, yes. Yeah, so, the pineapple is so sweet. Okay. And make sure as you're cutting it, you get all that good juice in your bowl because that will really coat the pear and add uh -huh. a great flavor. Okay. So then once, what? Once this is all mixed up. You'll pour it in your baking dish. Okay, there's that there's voice my that I love again. again. We just need some music in the background, and I'll be right at home. Okay, so I have about a cup of oats. Mm -hmm. We're going to add a quarter cup. Do you want to mm -hmm. do this yeah, part? Yeah, I'd love to. Okay, that's a little nutmeg. That's okay. a quarter teaspoon. Okay. And we're going to do a quarter cup of whole wheat flour. Okay. And two more tablespoons of brown sugar. And you can substitute other sweeteners if you prefer in this. Yeah. Okay, that's melted butter. Melted butter. I'll give it a little... We'll give it re-melting encouragement. Yes. How about that? Yeah, you just want it soft so it'll Kay. incorporate and mix in and more, more ginger. More ginger? More You're ginger. You're killing me. Okay, so just mix that until it's nicely incorporated in. And this is our crumble That's our your top. crumble on top. So once that's all mixed, you'll just place that on top of your fruit mm -hmm. and put it in a 325 degree oven for about Kay. 35 minutes. Okay. You've got another bonus recipe for us? Absolutely. So vegetables in season. Now. It's not summer, we're not gonna find zucchini and tomatoes in season, but look for what's on sale. That's how you'll kind of know what's in season. Okay, so we've good got tip. cabbage, carrots, parsnips, Brussels sprouts, potatoes, sweet potatoes, onions, all those kind of root vegetables. My favorite of that bunch, season. Brussels sprouts. Oh, well, you're in luck, I that's what we're making. I have an affinity for Brussels sprouts. And I know it's a new love for a lot of people, yes. but it's kind of having a moment right now, that little vegetable. Yeah, well, I think a lot of people have mostly had them as kids like boiled or steamed, which is not, I don't think, the most delicious yeah, way. Yeah. So we are going to roast Brussels sprouts today. Okay. So first you want to prep the Brussels sprouts by trimming the ends and cutting them in half. Mm -hmm. And while you're doing that, pop a little bacon in the oven. Okay. 400 degrees until it's cooked crispy. This is a popular combination, yes. Brussels sprouts and bacon. Last week we put it in mac and cheese. Oh my goodness. This week we're kind of going more simple, but I think it'll yes, be a great side. Yes, this is a great side dish. Mm -hmm. So to our Brussels sprouts, we're just going to add about two tablespoons of olive oil. Always less than I think you need. Yeah, well, okay, here's the trick. So when the bacon is finished cooking, mm -hmm, so I have some mm -hmm. finished bacon here, you'll just remove that from your pan and set it aside okay. for later. And you've got that lovely bacon rendered fat. There it is. And you know what? That's going to give your Brussels sprouts a really fantastic flavor so you're as they it on roast. That same pan. Yes, Genius. one pan. Okay. Okay, so we're going to add a little sprinkle of salt. Yeah, they don't need a lot, right? No. Olive oil, salt, some bacon fat, that'll Pepper. flavor it up. Okay, so we'll we'll mix this. Uh-huh. Add it to our nice bacon pan. Okay. And that'll go in the oven. If they're smaller Brussels sprouts, about 20 minutes okay. at 400. Uh -huh. um, and if you like them a little bit more firm, check them sooner. Okay. So you'd put that on the pan. But let's move to the, the finishing touches because that's what really makes this so recipe. bacon and 
Are these pomegranates? You're going to add this all season? together? Yes. Oh. So I think what really makes this great, one of the things is you make a little dressing. Okay. So we've got, this is garlic. Mm -hmm. There's my spoon. We'll just spoon that in. Actually, one of my favorite restaurants in New York, my favorite side dish at that particular restaurant, it's a pizza place, a gourmet pizza place, is um, Brussels sprouts with peaches. Oh my so goodness. you're throwing that same idea. The, yeah, the a little sweet. sweeter fruit. Yeah, okay. So I put a little bit of prepared mustard, like a grainy mustard. Okay. We're gonna do some balsamic vinegar. There it goes. And this is our drizzle, our dressing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So about two tablespoons. We're just gonna eyeball that. Sure. Okay. More Smart olive cooks oil. Smart like yourself can do that. May I mix? Please mix. Okay. And you can add. I've got a little maple right on your left okay. that you can add in for a little sweetness. So once that's all mixed together, pour that over our Brussels sprouts. Add the bacon. Add the pomegranates. Okay, here's my favorite trick, Brooke. What? What? Scissors for <gasps> your bacon. There it is. Makes it so easy and simple. So you can just snip that right in there. Okay, we've got a delicious side dish working with the fruits Add for dessert. Add your pomegranates. And vegetables we have in season. Marta, thank you so much. You're so welcome. I know you're part of a big event coming up too. Can I ask you about that quickly? Yes, we have a fantastic event coming up for couples uh -huh. uh, in West Jordan at the Verdian Event Center okay. on February 9th. There it is. Let me double check my date. We'll check that date. February 9th. We will have food trucks, great classes, and keynote speaker Dave Schramm. We'll look forward to that. Thank you so much for the You're rest so of the inspiration, too.